The salad fork's unpolished correctly. Look. It looks fine. Fine is not what these guests expect. All the work that Effie Barrow and Cornelia have been doing finally is paying off. Here was a chance for us to like really show the upper class of New York in all its splendor. When you write it, you don't know what you're gonna get. And then our locations find this incredible space that you go, okay, this is a mind bender. The Duke Estate on Central Park. My golly, what a space that is. Extravagant location and costumes are beautiful and everybody looks stunning. Ellen creates hundreds of these unbelievable ball gowns. You can't just buy those off the rack. You have to make each and every one. You look absolutely stunning, that dress. Henry's complimented me a hundred times. My favorite thing about the ball was um, this incredible shot that Stephen did. We all came in thinking, man, we're gonna be here all day because there's all these little conversations that are happening all over the room. And suddenly we all kind of realized that there was some big shot being set up. It brings you into the ball and you walk with all these different characters. You pass those dancers. You pick up Barrow and Robertson and some of the other board members. And then you come over to the show Walters and, and the Robertsons and then you cut back to Henry entering, it was absolute brilliance. It was a three and a half minute shot. He did it one shot. It was hugely impressive, really, just to see what Stephen did with everything. He has such a clarity of vision and being able to, you know, execute it like he does. It was pretty brilliant. I remember Michael Angarano asking why we had stopped halfway through once, and I said, that was me, I screwed up. To be the last section of the scene, that's a lot of pressure. As Michael put it, 100 people have done their job perfectly, and then you screwed it up. <laughs> when they finished the shot and they finally did it, Stephen and Greg Jacobs, the first AD, hugged. I've never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> I love the evening. What's extraordinary is the pride with which Effie Barrow explains that she's gotten Williams and Walker. The original cake walkers, the two real coons. And down come these two African-American men in blackface. And it's absolutely 100% true. Williams and Walker were incredibly successful when we got to set to shoot it and the two actors walked in in blackface. I think everybody in the room felt it. It's just so strange to see. And when you do see it, you're so taken aback. Name all my children after flowers. There's Lily, Rose, and my son. Artificial. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that everybody's sitting there laughing at it. There were certain norms in society that were just accepted that the show does not shy away from. The choice that we made was that any enjoyment that Opal and Algernon got out of it was enjoying the irony of the fact that the people in this room don't quite seem to get that Williams and Walker are making fun of them. They're talking about being these highfalutin people, that they're actually you know, imitating the people who, who are paying the bill, which is what they did so brilliantly. If I was a hangman or a grave digger, I could get some sure enough enjoyment working for certain folks I know. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I met Michael Angarano, I asked him if he could dance. And I promised his mom that I would find a moment for Bertie to dance. I'm not gonna brag, Ariel and I were the best dancers there. Michael is a great dancer. He is. It was very fun practicing in between takes. Me and Charlie, we kept tripping up. I had this giant train on my gown, just kept whipping people. It was exhausting, I have to say, to do that dance over and over again. I didn't have a clue how hard it was to do that. The trick is to make it travel on a course with everybody else trying to make theirs travel on a course. You need to hear the couple next to you going, oh, sorry, sorry, that's, that's my foot, oh, sorry, oh, God, sorry. <laughs> it was a fun day.